Hi, it's Kate from True Blue Homeschool and we are here at the Riverside Zoo and Discovery Center in Nebraska. It is a great little zoo. You could get through it in an hour or so, um, but I recommend that you stay and spend the day if you can. Bring a picnic lunch. There are presentations every half hour or so through the, at least the middle part of the day and you can get up close and personal with some of the animals. They have an interesting collection of typical zoo animals like tigers and uh, unusual ones like you can feed the giant uh, koi in the little river, um, they've got reptiles and they've got um, a petting zoo, a uh, giant play area for the kids, so I give it a thumbs up. This is a great little zoo and inexpensive to get into as well. Come with us and check it out. The zoo cost $8 for people aged 13 and above and $5 for kids. One of the first things that struck me when I walked in was how well they took care of their grounds. When we were there in August, the grounds were lush and green and it just gave it a nice atmosphere to walk through. The water fountain was fun for the kids and they had a really quite big playground. There was a dig area first, a dino dig area where the kids could unearth uh, fake dinosaur bones. They gave a little bit of educational information about the types of bones and the time periods that they, were, that they came from. And the kids could use little brooms, handheld brooms, to sweep away all of the material and unearth the bones. Right next to the dino dig area was a playground with slides and climbing equipment. Some of it unique, like this old stagecoach that kids could climb on, and some typical structures, play structures. There was also a splash pad area for the kids to play in, so I'd recommend bringing towels and swimsuits if the kids want to do that. Right next to the playground was the petting zoo. You could pay 25 cents in an old-fashioned coin-operated uh, dispenser and get a handful of food. You could feed the llamas and the goats and the donkeys. So I would recommend you either bring quarters with you or buy some at the entrance to the zoo. And look up. <laughs> the petting zoo does close for an hour or so around lunchtime for the animals to have a rest. But they do have an indoor area as well as part of the petting zoo and they had teenage volunteers that were there to uh, show off the animals of the day. It's a great teenage program if you do happen to live near there you can volunteer for the summer. They also have shows throughout the day and after the reptile show you could uh, handle the snake or the turtle. Again for 25 cents you could get more food but this time for the fish and the turtles that were uh, in the water close to the entrance of the zoo. It was a bit of a feeding frenzy. You might want to take more than a quarter or two uh, and stay a while and feed the fish. It was fun to do. Or you can catch a show like this one that Emily got to volunteer in. There's a nice big shell. Show everybody your nice big shell in the middle. Show a nice big shell. Yes. So the nice big shell so that helps blend in a little bit as well as protect from those nasty predators that are trying to eat them, right? So I protect yourself. But they also have really awesome, oh, no. so they have these nice big flippers. You want to put your hand in here? These nice awesome flippers right here and right here. So they can go swimming. You want to show everybody your nice flippers and guys? So they can actually, turtles can swim really super fast. The employees were wonderful at the zoo. And you could listen to presentations like this one by the herpetologist who told us all about the snakes and the milk frogs that they have there. By far Tom's favorite exhibit at the whole place was the milk frogs and he sat and watched for about half an hour just watching the frogs. We also went to the primates presentation where we learned tail, about uh, how they so train them and we got to see some painting. The artwork is sold in the gift store and they're tr using it to raise money for the zoo. They had a few indoor displays as well. 
The zoo is trying real hard this year to raise money for the bear exhibit. It was one small area. They only had one bear. They're trying to get more bears in and I believe build a better habitat for them. The lion was one of the more typical animals that, you'd so that we saw at the zoo, but perhaps Emily's favorite was the swift foxes. There's two back there, two of the swift fox. Tom, two, two foxes. Come up on here. Oh, there we go, that's better. Now you can see three? Yes, I can see three. Those are swift foxes. Hey, a big one. The kids had a great time pointing at all the animals throughout the zoo, both those in cages and those that were just wandering around. Like the peacocks. We even saw one that had a little baby. Overall, it's a terrific zoo and I'd highly recommend it if you find yourself in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Well, thanks for joining us on this adventure to the Riverside Zoo and Discovery Center in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. Hit that subscribe button and follow along as we homeschool one adventure at a time.